Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wedding Film Coach. My name is Luke, and today we're going to be talking about the A7S III and the new rumor that it has a flip screen LCD, which everyone is very excited about. We'll talk about that coming up. Real quick before we get into the video, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be extensively covering the Sony A7S III, as well as the Canon R5 and R6, and so all these great new cameras that are coming out, you're gonna see a lot of content coming out from me, and you don't want to miss it if you're interested in these cameras. Thanks so much, on with the video. For years now, people have been complaining that Sony cameras do not have flip screen LCDs. And mostly this is for people who are either doing this sort of thing where they're talking to a camera and they need a good and quick way to check their framing, check to make sure uh, that the autofocus is working correctly, or uh, vloggers. Vloggers need to be able to see themselves to make sure everything they want captured in their story is captured correctly. And for years, the A7S, the A7S II, the A7 III, all of those cameras, the A7R, none of those cameras have ever had a flip out LCD screen. Only recently has Sony began to start implementing new designs into their cameras to allow people to see themselves while filming. I remember hearing uh, or reading an interview in an article uh, two or three years ago, I forget where it was from, but I just remember this because it was so interesting. Um, somebody was talking to a Sony executive, maybe even one of their engineers at a conference, and they asked them, hey, when are you going to implement a flip out screen, much like Canon or Panasonic or, or uh, lots of other people do? And the, the interviewer noticed that the, the Sony executive seemed to be surprised by that people would even want that. And so I thought that was very telling that they just were not uh, interested or, or even observant of this whole world that wants to do video by themselves and not have it maybe in a professional mindset, what we would think as, um, but they would never even thought that people would want to flip out LCD screens. So now it's, uh, it's good to know that they are at least uh, aware that that's a desire for their consumers. And it seems like now they're aware that, hey, this is a desire for, for high-end users who want that, who are going to get this high-end camera, this a7 III that's rumored. And uh, let's talk a little bit about what um, they, they, we think is going to be in it right now. And then I'll tell you some of my thoughts on what I hope they also implement into this new touchscreen, into this new LCD screen. And so let's talk about what the rumor is right now. The rumor is that the A7S III will have a flip out screen much like Canon users are used to. Also, like I mentioned before, Sony has been implementing uh, screens that can flip forward. Their first attempt at this was the A6400 or maybe the RX100, I forget which one came out first, but uh, essentially that screen flipped up, all the way up from the back, so it kind of extended that articulation that, uh, that Sony usually implements in their LCD screens on the back panel. Um, this was better than nothing, but it really wasn't a good design because you, that messed with your, your microphone if you wanted to have a microphone up there. And honestly, it just didn't feel right from what a lot of creators said when they were using this. And so I feel like they've finally figured this out that we just need it to flip out to the side, uh, stay out of the way of all the cables that we may have, the microphones that we may have on our cameras. And so they, they did this recently in their new release of the ZV-1. And this camera was really interesting. It was specifically designed for vloggers in mind, for content creators who just need something quick, something with good quality, and something where they can monitor themselves without any hassle. And uh, I feel like this camera has been a really big hit for Sony. And so now with the success of that design implemented into this much smaller camera, the ZV-1, it seems like now they're going to go ahead and implement this into the new Sony A7S III, which we're all excited about. Uh, but let's take a moment and not get too excited. I want to talk about what uh, we've seen in the past as far as the quality of their screens and what we hope to see implemented in this new screen. So first, yes, we want it to be able to flip out and swivel. However, I would love for this new screen to be able to articulate up and then flip out and swivel. And the Panasonic S1H implemented this in a really ingenious way. They allowed the LCD screen to articulate out and then, and then flip out, 
can then swivel around however you need it to. And this did a couple of things. One, this just increased the amount of angles that you could view your, your monitor from, which is always good. That's the whole point, right? But also it got the, the it got the L C D panel out of the way of any cables that may be plugged into your inputs on the side of the camera, which is really important as well because you want not only accessibility, viewing angles, but you don't want it to uh, get in the way of any other things that you may try to be, uh, that you may be trying to do with your camera, whether that's external recording, whether that's you have your, your mic jack plugged in or you have it plugged into a power source, anything you need you, that's usually on that side of the camera, you do not want it getting in the way. So I hope that they implement that sort of design into it and not just a basic flip to the side LCD screen. And let's talk about size and resolution for a moment. And so historically, Sony's LCD screens have been a little smaller. Uh, I'm here at the at B&H website and I'm comparing different cameras that give us a good kind of contrast as to to what Canon's doing what Sony's doing and then again I'm going to talk about the S1H a little bit more uh, that was a great camera in many regards uh, specifically it had one of the best LCD screens that I've ever seen on a camera it was gorgeous so we're going to use that to, as kind of a base of contrast and so uh, let's start back with the A7S II though all the way here on the right side of the screen and uh, we're here at the monitor viewfinder section we're going to be focusing on the monitor so let's look here it had monitor size it just had a three inch monitor the a7s2 um, and that's not super small by any means but we would like for it to be bigger and some of the bigger cameras that have come out recently you see here in the canon r5 and in the panasonic s1h their monitor size was 3.2 inches and you may think, hey, what's another 0.2 inches? But whenever you're already looking at an image that small, another 0.2 image, another 0.2 inches makes a big difference. And I would even love to see Sony do something a little different and just go above and beyond here, do a 3.3, 3.4, 3.5 inch monitor. I know that that takes up a lot of real estate there on the back of the camera, but if they implement good touch functions, menu navigation, then that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so I hope that they make it at least a 3.2 inch screen. And that leads us to resolution. So uh, in the past, the A7S II has only been I say only been it's, it's it was a 1.2 million dot um, monitor and at the time this came out back in 2015 that was okay it wasn't great but it was about standard now we've seen new design and new technology put into these back panel lcd screens to make them better resolutions better um, better image quality all around better crispiness you know better detail because you need to see that when you're filming to make sure that everything is just like you want it and so now we're getting up into the the 1.6 for the canon r6 uh 2.1 million dots for the canon r5 and again talking about the s1h they have a 2.3 million dot um, monitor on the back of their camera and so with a bigger screen at least 3.2 inches and I want to see at least something around a 2 million dot back panel LCD just for that resolution and that crispiness that we need to see the detail in our images I feel like that is going to definitely fall into that category I keep mentioning this but fall into that category of exceeding expectations I want to see a better LCD panel on the back and now so we talked about uh, the flip the flip design, the screen size and resolution. Let's also talk about uh, the touch sensitivity that it, it will almost definitely have. So it will have, I'm just like 95, 98% <laughs> sure on this, it will have a, a touch to focus option. And so while you're filming, you will be able to touch the screen to tell it where you want to spot focus or where you want to, to focus on, which face you want to focus on if you're using face detection. Um, you should almost definitely have that function still. However, in the past, Sony has not implemented this touch feature into its menu navigation. Now, a lot of people complain about this and say, well, you know, why not? Why, why not have it in there? It makes it so much quicker. Honestly, I, I could take or leave it. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I am, once I get my quick menu set and all of my hot buttons set, I am rarely in the actual menu on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, especially while filming and so I don't feel like that is going to be much of an issue at all 
if for some reason that's hard to do or that's hard to code or the software in it then you know that's fine uh, i could take or leave that however i would love to see touch uh, sensitivity included in a quick menu navigation uh, the panasonic s1h again did this and of course all canon users are like we know we know uh, but the panasonic s1h did this and that was one thing again that i really liked about it as i was filming i could very quickly change to different video codecs change resolutions change uh, frame rates and yeah you can definitely set up presets on on your top dial for that your different modes that you shoot in uh, but at the same time you're still limited to two to three of those quick modes that you can access and with this um, touch sensitivity and the quick menu navigation you would be able to go through all of your options within a few seconds if you needed to that would definitely save you some time if uh, you found yourself needing simply just to, to play around with the settings or if you really needed to change settings quickly throughout the day that would be great let's go uh, over to the screen brightness now specifically auto dimming now the Sony a7s II, when filming in 4k will automatically dim the screen and I cannot tell you how much I hate auto dimming I hate it in my phones I hate it anywhere it comes up especially in cameras um, and it's not necessarily because I want to have the brightest uh, screen all the time sometimes that's not necessary but I just want to have a consistent screen because when you're filming something and then all of a sudden it gets dimmer it just seems like you're losing resolution it seems like maybe it's not quite focused it seems like you know there could be other problems that you that you need to manage that you need to monitor while you're filming and to have a consistently lit screen that is plenty bright for any environment, whether it's outside sunny conditions or inside uh, in, in uh, normal inside lighting conditions, that is really important to have that consistency there. And so I hope that they get away with auto dimming completely, um, at least in the, the major function modes. If they, if they come out with raw internal, then I would be okay if it dimmed there, just because I imagine that takes up so much processing power. However, if, if we're gonna get 4K, 10-bit, 422 internal at you know, 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second. I want all of that to be consistent, no auto dimming at all. I think that's what Sony needs to do, again, to exceed our expectations. And so that has been it for my, uh, my thoughts on this new rumor that there's going to be a flip screen LCD and then a few extra uh, things that I want to see implemented into the design and into the technology of this new a7s 3 And if you have any thoughts on this camera that you haven't seen a rumor about yet uh, Maybe you've heard a rumor that no one else has covered. Let us know in the comments We'd love to keep this conversation going. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about the new a7s 3 Camera that it's rumored to be announced very very soon. We're all excited about it Keep tuned in to this channel again I'd love for you to subscribe hit that notification bell uh, to see when I release videos we're going to be covering this uh, pretty extensively over the next few weeks I'm definitely going to get one of these cameras in whenever it's released to test it out and so be sure to let me know what you want to see what you want to see tested what you want to see in in real world conditions I would love to to take some uh, some advice or some suggestions from you all to see what it is I can provide you with that grants value to you all thanks so much for watching I'm Luke with Wedding Film Coach and I'll see you in the next video See ya.